Welcome back to Nori Factory. Thanks for watching another episode on the R32 GTR build. Today we are going to do gearhead dips from New Zealand. His brace for the front sun. What the fuck? In the gearhead stiff brace kit, it actually comes with M8 studs, which are these ones here. And it explains to do the diff hat first and the brace, and then it explains to do these. I'm gonna do something slightly different. Um, and, and this is only because when I removed my cover, what I noticed was this bolt here, so that one there in your in your diff assembly, that actually goes all the way through. So it's not just goes to a dead end. So if you look in there, we get, it actually goes through and comes out. That's that whole, uh, the, the black sort of stud you can see with sealant on it. What you need to do is apply sealant to this, the thread uh, of this bolt or stud when you put it in. So what I'm thinking is why we've got that the diff hat off or the brace and everything off, I might wind that one in first with silicon on it so I can then wipe it off the inside if any, any goes in. Okay, so this is our M8 stud and it's a, I think it's a four mil hex head. We can put a fair bit of silicon on, like an excessive amount, because we know we're able to wipe it off on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a little bit of silicon just in there to start off with. Okay, sort of wipe it around the walls and then just add a little bit to the thread. We really want it to seal and we can wipe it off on the inside if it's ever too much. Okay, now gently poke him in, put our thing in, and then on the inside where all the silicon is, you can see where our silicons come through, and then all as I do is we don't want to wipe it off completely, you just want to smear it over the top of the head of the, the stud. So I'll show you guys how I've um, carried out all the, the stud removal. I've just done one at a time very carefully. Now again, this is the only one that requires silicon. The rest, I sort of remove out one at a time. So undo it, any silicon that comes out, old silicon, just clean it up. Give it a bit of a blowout, careful not to get any in there. Clean him out. Now, you grab your stud. Now you just do it up just till it touches. I slide my washer on first. A little drop just on the thread, not too much at all. Put our nut on. The anodize on, on the gold anodize on these titanium studs is next level. I love it, it's really good anodizing. Now, so we've got 23 newton meters or 17 foot pounds, click, done. Okay, so once you've finished giving this plate a good clean, I just clean it up with the, the drill and the wire wheel. You have to remove the factory breather plate. So this breather plate is not required with the, the diff brace. Obviously the brace sort of goes over the top. And okay, so one thing to note before you go ahead and start fitting all your st studs straight to the actual diff here, you can't actually wind the studs in the diff housing first. They have to be wound in after the cut uh, the braces and the covers put on. If you put the, the studs in first, you can't get the brace and the cover on. Put your two M10 studs in place, you're happy with all your silicon, which I am. We drop the plate on, like that. Now, the reason we keep have these M studs in is to locate the plate so it doesn't slide all over the place. Right, now, we slide him on like this.
I don't normally wipe silicon off, but because we want to see the brace, I think it's a good idea. So whenever I torque anything, I always put a mark on it with a texture or a big stripe. But in this case, because I want it to look good as well, I just put a little white dot. All in all, this is a great kit from Gearhead Diffs. George actually helped me out with the ratio of the Hollinger gear locks to the, the ratio of the diffs. I got no idea how to work that out. So this has got four, four diff gears in it with the Hollinger six speed. Not only adds support to the GTR, but it actually looks pretty awesome as well. So instructions are easy to follow. Just make sure you torque everything up, put plenty of silicon on because it's not something that you wanna spend a while doing drain your diff oil out, clean it all up, put it all together, have it up in the car. It's, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do in the car than what it was for me just having it out here like this. But it's probably gonna be one of those parts that you're gonna add in while you're doing a big restoration like this anyway. So the diff's gonna be out of the car. Wicked product, George. Um, thanks for supporting the channel like you always have. And guys, get on to George. Hit him a message on Instagram, Gearhead Diffs New Zealand. Bullet Engineering put a MoTeC Hall Effect sensor on their motors, like when they give them to you, it comes as a part of the package. Look, PRP do some really bright colored ones and some fancy ones, and that's great if that's the, the build you're going for. But they also do some, some really quite nice um, hidden ones, and, and that's our factory plate there that they supply. And then they also supply this pretty cool bracket that the, the sensor goes into. Whether it be cherry sensors or the hall effect sensors, I think if you're going from 600 to 1200 horsepower, both of those sensors will work perfectly fine. It's just whatever trigger kit you go with. Okay, so this trigger kit looks pretty simple. Nice and easy one. Your basic Deutz plugs. Uh, we got our MoTeC sensor. These titanium bolts, they're really cool. I'm a bit of a titanium fan. So this is also titanium and there's our little trigger there. So that simply goes flying past this Hall Effect sensor and that gives us our cam angle. Let's get started, let's wire it up. It doesn't actually matter where you bolt this up, there's no right or wrong way. It'll only go two ways. You have to set your home signal spot anyway in the ECU. So just tension it up as per Nissan's manufacturer's specifications. So I'm just doing the wiring now, nice and easy stuff. Um, I'm not a massive fan of these plugs. I wish everything was Deutz plugs. Deutz plugs are so good. But this wiring's really good, which is nice. It's a nice touch. And I also found that from my old trigger kit, which will go nice on the end of that. Just gonna finish off the wiring now, and then that's the trigger kit done. So we've got a MoTeC sensor for the crank and a MoTeC sensor for the cam angle. Trigger kit is on and I actually really like it, it's cool. I'm gonna put the wiring here and I'm gonna try and run it, I have seen this done before, I'm gonna try and run it down in that bolt hole. So instead of putting a bolt hole there, I didn't end up putting the black cover on in the back because it was actually scratching the paint and Brad will kill me. So I've just taken it off and I think it'll be right. I'll see how we go. If I have to shave a bit of the, the black thing down, I will. I'm also contemplating changing it to silver to match the oil cap and the, the silver decal on top, but we'll see how we go. I do like this wiring, how it's tucked away. I have to leave that for now until I get the engine wiring loom on it, which will be shortly, but um, that's all done. Another thing ticked. So these weren't very old, these ITBs. I actually brought these from Kudos Motorsports, actually. What I did notice was I stripped them down anyway because they did have a bit of crap on them. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't like the, um, it's called throttle coat that goes around the edge of the ITBs. I didn't like how it was from factory. They were sealing and we didn't have any idle issues. 
But pulling everything apart and doing what we're doing, I thought I might as well pull them apart, get the throttle bodies, the plates themselves actually zinc coated and just start again. But putting them back together, what I've noticed is one, the the plates are slightly different and, and I'm not sure where, I haven't figured that out yet. These are the plates, the, the new plates that I got purchased last year that were on the ITVs. These were zinc coated heavily and I've had to like rub it back because I couldn't get them to go back in the, the small piece, like the small bit that it slides into is very fine. I went down to my old throttle bodies that were on the car from originally, so, so from 1994, the original ITVs. I pulled one of those out and I pulled one of the, the butterflies out. And what I noticed was it feels different straight away. Like there's clearly a weight difference between these two. So I think they've actually changed material over the years. I'd like to find out what it is and what's different. Before I took them out, I did mark which way the dots went, okay? So which way these face and which way those two dots went. I drew it on the table here so I can't miss it. Slide them in, which they slide in so nice. The other ones barely slide in. These ones slide in perfectly. Now, when I shut it like that, you can see that it completely goes closed all the way around. So from when you open it to when you shut it, there's not much of a gap there. And I know that the paste that you use, the Tomei throttle coat, will fill any air that's going to get past there but if i slip that out and slip one of these ones back in look at the gap that way and that way that's as far as i can shut it and you can clearly see that there's a gap around there so it doesn't shut now i don't know what it is um that's how they were when i pulled them out and to me that's not good enough once you've got your orientation worked out of your ITV, your, your plate, I sort of wrote it down here to give myself a reference. But um, once you do that, you simply work out that your screws are at the front, which way it shuts, because it'll only sort of close one way. Your two dots go down, so we slide it in, close it up and get it sort of centre. Then you grab your two screws over here using your thread locker. Drop a bit of drop a bit of love on them. You don't want heaps on there because it'll I worked out that it goes like into the throttle plate. So I sort of let it soak off in the rag a bit. Drop him in. Get it in the center. Get like where it's actually gonna close freely and get your two lines lined up with the bottom line of the throttle shaft. Then just check that it operates freely and you can see now we're getting a really good um, surface area around them all grabbing so we can just fix it up with our throttle coat now so i'm just numbering them again so i know exactly where they are i've got a number on that side and that side and then i've got my old ones here for reference still on the bench I'm glad I kept those because I've used them heaps for just for reference. Um, it's time to finish the rest of the kit. Now I don't have to do the bearings or anything because these ones are brand new pretty much. But I do want to replace the seals which I pulled out. And this Remax kit, throttle refresh kit, actually comes with an extra add-on or an add-on thing which these I think are just meant to protect the shafts and the seals a bit more. They didn't come out with these from factory as far as I know, maybe on the 33s and 34s, but the 32s definitely didn't have these. They just go over the seals. So now we've finished the throttle body rebuild, um, the Tomei paste, that was my first time using it. It's pretty tricky, but it's pretty simple. Just get it all around the edges. Um, I read mixed reviews online. Some said just paint it on the, the throttle butterfly that 
moves away. Others said just run it around both sides. So I did lightly both sides. I think that's the best option. And then we've got new seals. And then there's also these new bits in the Remix ITV or Remax, I should say, the Remax ITV um, throttle restorer has these new inserts that press over the seals and just click in there. Now it's time to move on to the um, Dartone Racing drive-by wire system.